Hi, my name is Arthur Morva. I'm an electronic engineering student at Tunisinus, and this project is about development of a 16 QAM modulator in the modulator Python model suitable for VHDL implementation. The project groups run by me, Jonas Dandanel, and Professor Sander Ferreira. So, in this project, a uh, communication system is designed in Python. We will use this design as a guide to the VHDL code finding out uh, what are the best factors for the filters, with how many samples we can get a satisfactory result, and all the information necessary. It's also possible to validate the VHDL code by exporting VHDL data and comparing with the Python implementation. The communication system is composed by a modulator, an additive white Gaussian noise channel, and a demodulator. First, I'm going to talk about what are the quadrature amplitude modulation characteristics and low IF applications. Then I'll explain about Python and the tools it has to offer to digital communication simulations. I'll explain each block of the diagram that we developed, uh, the beginning of our code in VHDL, and how we're going to compare the results from each platform, followed by preliminary conclusions. Quadrature amplitude modulation is used in all kinds of systems, digital TV, radio, internet, and anything that requires a high data rate. We're using a carrier frequency of 2 MHz, it's a low intermediary frequency, and about low AF applications. A good example is the market of IoT, where it's used a lot. And using low AF, we can analyze all the system in the digital domain. Why Python? Well, the main reason Python was chosen is because it's an open source platform. There's a lot of documentation and libraries for digital communication. And I think that if anyone is beginning this field, Python helps a lot. You really have to study what's underneath the blocks in your diagram. Uh, here's some figures, of some tools that we can use in, in Python, mm, like FFT, uh, implement filters, and some other tools that I'll show along the presentation. The first block of the modulator is the slicer. It separates the odd and even bits in two vectors. So the even bits are in the vector called in-phase vector and the odd bits in the quadrature vector. So we can treat these two vectors in parallel through the modulator. After this, we have the mapper. A pair of bits from the in-phase vector, for example, is summed and will index another vector that characterizes the constellation of 16 QAM. From here, we'll treat each pair of bits as a symbol. Here's the figure of the constellation. In the, the x-axis represent the in-phase symbols, and the i-axis the quadrature symbols. So if the pair of bits is 0, 0, then the symbol from position 0 will represent the pair. If the pair of bits is 1, 1, that's true in binary, the symbol from the third position will represent this pair. Now that we know the arrays with all the symbols from both arms of modulator, the upsampler block is implemented. We use the factor of 16 samples for the simulation. Uh, the block increases the symbol samples, adding zeros between each value. The factor is 16, so 15 zeros are inserted in between the symbols. Here's a figure before the upsampler, and here's after the upsampler. In the shaping filter block, a square root raised cosine filter with roll off of 0.35 is implemented to give the symbols a shape. Besides that, you can see in this FFT before and after the filter that it takes all the information that was spread in the frequency domain and puts it in a defined spectrum. The consequence of that is that the symbols are spread in the time domain. So this filter also guarantees that the current symbol has an amplitude near zero at the peak of the next symbol reducing the probability of inter-symbol interference. This figure is uh, the signal before the, the convolution with the filter and after the convolution. The mixer and the combiner are the last blocks of the modulator. So the mixer takes a cosine wave and modulates the in-phase signal and a sine wave mod modulates the quadrature signal. So now you can see the combiner sums point to point the, both of those signals and also the, the reason for that is that it shifts the frequency spectrum. You can see here that we take an intermediary frequency of zero and when we multiply by a sine of two megahertz for example, we shift 
the, the spectrum to an intermediary frequency of 2 MHz. Then the signal passed through an identified Gaussian noise. A scenario of 15 dB was used as reference to add the noise. And when it gets to the demodulator, the first block is a mixer. Here's an example from the in-phase arm of the demodulator where the signal is mixed by a cosine. We can expand this equation. And by trigonometric characteristics, we end up with this equation. And it's possible to see that the in-phase signal has a DC component and an AC component with double the frequency of the carrier, and the creditor signal has just the AC component. It's very clear to see both components in this FFT and this graphic of the in phase signal in the time domain. So, to obtain the signals in baseband, a low pass filter with cutoff frequency of 1 MHz is implemented. In the figure uh, is the in phase signal and the quadrature signal in the time domain and the filter frequency response in the frequency domain. The meshed filter block convolutes a template based on the square root raised cosine filter with the signal. Uh, the goal is to increase the signal to noise ratio. We can see in this figure that uh, the amplitude of the signals have increased as well. The Gardner algorithm uh, was used to synchronize the symbols. It compares the current symbol sampling point with the previous sampling point. Uh, this figure shows when the correct points found. This one is when there is a late sampling. And this one is when there is an early sampling. This is the equation that was used to implement the algorithm. When it results in zero, there is no need to adjust the timing. When it's less than zero, a timing advance is required. And when it's bigger than zero, a timing delay is required for the next symbol. Uh, we do that by increasing or decreasing the variable t in this equation. Using the information from the Gardner algorithm, we can sample the signal in the right time. So this is the in-phase symbols and the quadrature symbols. In this figure, you can see the constellation um, formed by the, the modulated symbols. Uh, it's the same constellation from the modulator, but with higher amplitudes. So we define an area of detection that uh, everything that's inside that area corresponds to a pair of bits. For example, if a symbol is between 0 and 10, the amplitude of the symbol is between 0 and 10, it corresponds to the bits 1 and 0. The combiner block just puts all the bits in order. So it knows that the in-phase vector is composed by the even bits and the quadrature vector by the odd bits, so it just combines them in, one, in just one vector. The VHDL modulator implementation was based on the same block diagram as the Python implementation. And the only difference is that each block works with different clock. The slicer splits the data into four bit arrays by using four latches for the same reason as the Python modulator. Now we have information of the in-phase arm and information from the quadrature arm. The mapper uses a lookup table to transform the numbers in fixed point numbers of 8 bits using two's complement. Here you can see that pair of bits like, for example, 0, 0 um, corresponds to the position 0 of the mapper array, that's minus 1. So a pair of bits uh, represented by a number, by a symbol. And we represent that symbol by fixed point numbers of 8 bits. Comparing the mapper block implemented in Python and the VHDL performance, we can see uh, in these figures that they have almost the same result, but analyzing the error graphic, it's possible to see a little difference of 0.5% in the symbol 0.3. And that's because in VHDL, there's a limit number of bits that we can use to represent a symbol. Preliminary conclusions. Uh, the block diagram developed by the group had a satisfactory result. The first blocks of the modulator that were implemented in VHDL matched with the Python model. We still need to implement a phase detector in the demodulator for carrier synchronization, and then the demodulator model will be complete. These are my main references. And thank you for listening.